The purpose of this video is to go over the Pearson chi-square formula presented in the textbook. So I should mention that there are several ways to express the Pearson chi-square formula. I chose this way in the textbook because I think it's the most intuitive. It's based ultimately on the difference between the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies. And that's going to be true whether you're doing a really basic Pearson chi-square analysis, like testing the difference between the observed proportions identified by my ex-girlfriend that were correct in the taste testing trial versus the expectation under the null hypothesis. So it's really just two observations in terms of proportions. And this formula also works for more complicated Pearson chi-square analyses, as I described further in the textbook, like the 2 by 2 Pearson chi-square analysis where I looked at the left-handers and dyslexia effect. So the numerator is the observed frequencies, which is what you get in your data, the number of observations. So for example, seven observations of correct taste testings between Pepsi and Coke, minus the expected frequencies under the null hypothesis. So that's what the expected frequencies represent, is if there were no effect at all in the population, what would you expect to see? Well, in this case, if there are 10 trials, it would be five correctly guessed Pepsi versus Coke taste testings. And then you have to square that difference because you're actually going to do it twice in the formula. So one side's going to be negative and the other side's going to be positive. And you have to make sure you have positive values throughout. That'll make more sense when I go through the calculations in the next video. But this is why essentially we call it Pearson chi-square is because we are squaring both the positive and negative values. So there are no negative values in a Pearson chi-square analysis. It's only positive. And then the effect of the difference between observed and expected is divided by expected frequencies. And then that's summed across all the rows. So the key thing to take away from the Pearson chi-square formula is that it is essentially the difference between observed frequencies and expected frequencies. And all those residuals are squared, which makes it only positive values. And the larger the difference between observed and expected, the larger the chi-square value is going to be, and the greater chances you're going to have of rejecting the null hypothesis of no difference.